Everybody. Welcome back to Boaha. Uh, King of the Hill Rewatch Podcast. I am Mike. And I'm Rusty. Rusty, we are in Season 2, Episode 9, The Company Man. Episode 9. This is uh, December 7th, 1997. Can't December, believe we're on Episode 9. December 7th, right? The day that will live in infamy. Isn't that right? December 7th, 19, Fall Day 1. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it sounds so like. So you were telling me we've got, uh, we got some... Uh, May 11th, 97. We got some star-studded cast here. Yeah, so in this one, you have uh, Hank, who's trying to like secure a deal uh, with a guy who's a developer mm-hmm. from New Jersey or something. I think uh, Boston. Yeah, Boston. Sorry, yeah. Boston. Yeah, it's all the same once you go you know, past the Mason Dixon <laughs> line. Uh, I think they're yeah, okay. All right, gotcha. <laughs> but uh, you've got uh, Mr. Holloway and Miss Holloway. Yeah, and these two people are played by Billy West. Uh, Mr. Holloway is played by Billy West, who is a really, really famous uh, voice actor. Yeah, really does a lot. Of, I actor. think he got really famous doing Futurama. Uh, Futurama, yeah, but he also did yeah. some voices on Doug, and he did some voices. Uh, oh, he's done uh, a shit Ren ton and of stuff. Stimpy. Yeah, did some Ren and Stimpy uh, stuff. Isn't he the voice of SpongeBob? I don't. Nah, no, no, that's somebody else. Is it? Yeah, that's know. another guy. That's a comedian. Either way, yeah, he's uh, he's prolific. He's done a lot of stuff. He and has. then you have uh, his wife. She doesn't have very many voice uh, parts in this, but it, his wife is voiced by Stockard Channing, which is a really odd name. But uh, Stockard Channing, you would know her. Most most everybody only knows her from Greece or from the movie uh, Where the Heart Is with Natalie Portman, where she's the girl who lives inside of Walmart. Oh, really? Yeah, she's like this oh, young see, Southern girl who gets like abandoned at this Walmart every. Southern woman knows what that movie is. It's a very Southern, it's a very trailer park Southern movie. You know, she's yeah. like this trailer park teenage girl who gets abandoned at a Walmart while she's pregnant for, by her boyfriend. He just leaves her at this Walmart. So she oh, lives practical inside the ma- Oh, okay, okay, okay. I got yeah. you, got you. I, uh, oh, you're saying where the heart is. Yeah, where the heart is. But Practical Magic also. Yeah, Practical Magic, yeah. I would say. Grace, she was uh, the beauty school dropout. No. No, she wasn't the beauty school dropout. She was the, she was the don't mess with my silky drawers. Yeah, she was the... Yeah. Uh, she was the. Uh, <laughs> I, I had her name in my head. I should know. I know everything yeah. about that movie. Yeah. Uh, keep your filthy paws off my silky. <laughs> that's draws. right. That's right. Yeah, that's uh, who she was. Dang. Yeah, I can't remember her name in it either. Uh, oh, somebody scream it! Scream it at oh, your podcast be, player. My right sister is going to be pissed if she hears this episode without <laughs> me saying her name. So uh, this is one where uh, Hank is going to use his sales skills. Uh, he fashions himself as a uh, a big time salesman. Of propane and propane accessories, yep. and you know we we don't see him on sales calls very often. No, you don't see him any do anything. It, you you any honestly any just think he much. just holds down the fort there at at uh, uh, the propane store. Yeah, so far, yeah, if so far on the show anyway. So we start off with Bobby at uh, at the fuel Rizzo. store. Huh? Sorry, Rizzo. Rizzo. That's it. Yeah, it came yeah. to me. I just, I don't, I don't, yeah. I just, yeah, I had, I had to get that out. I didn't want to get bitched at for that. So <laughs> we see uh, Bobby and Hank there at Strickland Propane, and Bobby is writing up his uh, Sunday school report. Uh, Hank is, uh, hey, Bobby, why don't you go ahead and read that Sunday school report to me like I'm a customer and you're trying to win my business. And Bobby's like, okay, well, the man I most admire is my dad, Hank Hill. He sells propane and propane accessories. That is literally all he's got written. That is it. Well, that's all you got. You and, know? and Hank's like, I like it, son. You grabbed my attention and got me eager, eager for, for more. more. <laughs> so in comes Mr. Strickland. Is this, this Howdy, is Hank. not the first time for Mr. Strickland, right? Uh, I th- 
Or is it? I can't Oh, sorry, remember. yeah. So this is the first appearance of uh, this episode. Like I said, this episode's got a lot yeah. like behind-the-scenes stuff. So this episode, you've got uh, Buck Strickland's first appearance, M.F. Thatherton's first appearance, uh-huh. and also the first appearance of the Jug Store Cowboys Strip Club. <laughs> <laughs> Jug Store Cowboys. You know, I was looking that up while I was watching this, and uh, you can buy some lovely Jug Store Cowboys T-shirts. And I got a qu- <laughs> and this answers somebody's question that listens to our show because they yeah. they had pointed out to me that we had skipped an episode, and then they sent me a picture of the first season DVDs contents. Really? Well, this show was production code is how they did the DVD. Uh huh. So the production code for this show was. The first season. They were going to use it in the first season. Oh, so the production code puts it in between two episodes in the first season. This makes more sense being in the first season, to be honest It does, and you. if you look at some of the drawing, like some well, of the artwork that, and stuff. it establishes it's, it's the character That too. Hank. Yeah, it yeah, establishes Hank a little bit more, but that's where, you, like I said, you first meet yeah. Buck Thatherton, so it meant, huh. made more sense, but they had shifted it and moved it. So uh, that answers the question yeah, to the sh- viewer, because I didn't know, I didn't have an answer for his question <laughs> until we, we got to the We strictly follow the IMDB pathway is what we're <laughs> Yeah, so that, uh, the whatever the internet tells me, yeah, or uh, specifically Hulu, yeah, <laughs> wherever Hulu guides would, me. That's true. Uh, uh, so I would like the DVD those. I might have to buy the DVDs just so we can get all the behind the scenes stuff. Probably visit your your local Goodwills and and do that. Make that whole collection happen. Yeah, probably. So I was looking up uh, <laughs> Jugstore Cowboys, and uh, like I said, there's some wonderful Jugstore Cowboy merchandise you can buy. But I, I was also directed, whenever you look up Jugstore Cowboys, there is a picture of a strip joint here in Texas. And uh, this strip joint is called Texas Showgirls. I don't know exactly where that's at. Uh, but proudly on their sign, they say, we are now the cheapest topless bar in Texas, <laughs> which I think is a weird brag, but okay. Yeah, that's, that's that is a weird brag. <laughs> We're the cheapest. <laughs> All right. So uh, in comes Buck Strickland for the first time, and uh, howdy, Hank, Hank. And that's, uh, that's always uh, uh, Mr. Uh, – that's the same guy who does Bill, Stephen Root. Yeah, uh, doing his voice, and this is one of my favorites because when you watch um, "Oh Brother, Where Art Thou," it, it, there's a lot of Buck Strickland in that radio DJ that he plays in that movie. the The voices are a lot. Oh, the that's same. him. The, yeah, the, the blind the, guy. The blind guy. Yeah. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that's him. Okay. Yeah. So he comes in, you know, just like Buck always does. Hank, how it? You know, uh, what you got there, old chop? Uh, I, and he's talking to Bobby and yeah, Bob, what you got there, old he's reading, his, he's reading his, his report and it's the man I most admire is my daddy. And he said, he got that right, Bobby, 15 years. I promoted him 15, 15 times, times yeah. all the way to assistant manager. <laughs> so what way. are the other promotions? It took 14 to get to assistant manager. Get to where he, was at. <laughs> he said, you should be proud, son. You're his seed. And then Bobby, of course, in Bobby fashion, I'm my daddy's seed. <laughs> I'm my daddy's seed. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's weird. Buck tells Hank that he's got a grunt, which uh, if you're not from Texas, I don't know if that's a thing or not, but I have heard old guys say grunt when they say they got a poop. Oh, I've never, ever heard that. Yeah. I got a grunt. Let's take a little meeting in the back. Uh, I've never heard that. Well, he said, Bobby, here's- <laughs> if they've got a problem with, if they've got a grunt to, to shit, Mike, they've got more problems than, oh, well, they do call than it. Than that. I got a grunt. Yeah. Uh, and so he throws Bobby the key to the March of dimes gumball machine and says, all you can eat. <laughs> oh, you can eat. So yeah. now we, uh, we transition into the, uh, the men's room. I'm assuming they're at, uh, uh, Strickland propane. Yeah, I really like how like uh, how Strickland sounds. Like I like his voice a lot. They're gonna need a propane oh, yeah. supply. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so he is on the can and uh, he's having a meeting with Hank, who Hank is trying very Which hard to often, face the other way. <laughs> it's a, it's often they have these meetings in. The well, can. what's funny is what comes in the flashback. He says, uh, "Have you ever heard of Holloway Hollows?" And he, uh, uh, Hank, pipes up with, "You know, that's the one that says Country Club Living at Price Club Prices, which I'm assuming he's talking Sam's, Costco, that kind of yeah. thing." Yeah. He said, "Yeah, that's the one. They're gonna need that propane supplier. Holloway himself come down here to Boston to check us out. This one's big, Hank. Eh? Here's your sales kit. Gives him keys to a Cadillac. Yep, and, then gives and him a crisp hundred, hundred dollar yeah. bill. And you know, the funny that, thing yeah. about this is, I remember when these hundred dollar bills came out." Uh, you know, they used to be different than this, and then they came oh, it out. It would be many years before I would see a $100 bill mm-hmm. when this episode came out. They came out with the, uh, these had the, I believe the first ones had the magnetic strip in it, had the big oh, okay. Ben Franklin head and yeah. all that stuff. I remember on. when they went blue. Oh, yeah. 
And so uh, he gives him his sales kit, and Hank is a little confused. Rental car keys. And he's like, yeah, big old cat. It. Yankees eat that stuff up like baby at Mama's mil- Malt Shop, that which is, is pretty gross. Mama's Malt Shop. You know, it's a gross thing to say, <laughs> but okay. Well, I mean, yeah, it is. It is Hank, gross. Hank's uh, like, what the heck is this? Mama's Malt Shop. He holds up that, that Ben Franklin. Well, it's he, Southern, though. You know what I mean? It's blue collar and gritty. I get it. I get it's it. really it's blue just, collar and gritty. I've about heard it and, way worse on, oh, a, sure. on a production floor. Sure. <laughs> so gritty. Mama's Malt up that's yes yeah, that's a good one <laughs> so he asked him what the, what the heck is this he tells him it's one of them counterproof benny franklin hundred dollar bills hundred benny hundred franklin dollar bills hundred yeah. hundred uh and hank proceeds to tell him that this is hank hill you're talking to i'm not gonna need all that james bond stuff to make a deal james bond a hundred dollar bill and a cadillac car yeah james i don't need cadillac all that james car. bond stuff maybe he means gadgets I guess. maybe in his mind when it's he's just, going to do a sale if he has anything else <laughs> attached to the sale other than the pie so or that's a pie his voice mode, and his pie. yeah, yeah. He said, well, Hank, I don't want to sneeze during your backswing, but we got some competition. M.F. Thatherton. And then, of course, Hank, uh, this brings up a big bad thing for Hank. He's yeah, just like, it pulls Thatherton. out a memory. And this is uh, this right here really lays the foundation of uh, how crazily devoted Hank is to yeah. this old time. That's true. This old timer Strickland here. And it's it's really weird. You know, he said to say he's the dad he never wanted or whatever, never or or the dad he did want is weird to say now that I see this episode because it's like why would he want the same dude that mm-hmm. his dad is? But mm-hmm. all this dude is just, he's like his dad, but he has money instead. Well, just think about this. He's just uh, like a, a less broke version of Cotton. Well, just think about this. Cotton had a Cadillac car, and he just threw him keys to the Cadillac car. Yeah. Now, well, that's the only I thing that that's really Cotton a big has. Thing, but yeah. still. Well, I know it's all, well, that's the, well, that's all the correlations. They both yeah. womanize. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. both drink. They both cheat on their women. Oh, absolutely. They both do all kinds of crazy stuff. So, so we, uh, we end up in this flashback, and you're back in the same bathroom, but it's, uh, Hank and Thatherton, who used to work for Strickland, we find yeah, out. Yeah, he did. I didn't know that. And then we see... I didn't remember this episode. This is one of the ones that uh, slipped my memory. And then we see uh, Buck sitting on the toilet again. Uh, he apologizes for having to call a meeting in the Skunk Works. The Skunk Works, yeah, I've never heard that one either. <laughs> I've never heard that one either. He says he promises not to make a habit of it, which is kind of funny because he's definitely made a habit of it. Uh, and so... Oh, it's an extreme uh, habit, Yeah, yeah. So he finishes up, and uh, Hank and Thatherton are talking, and he says, boy, Thatherton, those are some pretty tough sales quotas, I tell you what. And uh, here we get uh, the first Thatherton, me and Burt Reynolds, saying, uh, you want to meet that quota? Take some propane to an old age home. Tell them it's oxygen, which that's just going to kill people, right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> isn't that just going to kill people? Hank is uh, hes very upset about that, says you can't do that to old people, and uh, Thatherton uh, gives him the the speech, which uh, sounds a lot like a, uh, a used car salesman or a sleazy politician or something. He says, "Aren't you the company man? You see the difference between us. Uh, you're a worker bee. I'm the queen, which is weird. Right? Which is really weird. Yeah. And he says uh, he says something again, something along the lines. So, some, there's another line he has later on down that's also kind of suspect, like that one is. So he tells he tells Hank that he's going out on his own with Thatherton Fuels, and he's already signed Strickland's top three accounts. And uh, Hank Hank fires back and says, "You got one heck of a nerve plotting against a man while his, his seat's, seat's still, still warm." warm. <laughs> and he says, "Take a look around, Hank, because you ain't going nowhere." And, and Hank says, that's where you're wrong. But, of course, we know Hank really hasn't gone Yeah, anywhere. he never goes anywhere. But that's funny because he's going to sit down right there on a warm toilet seat. Mm-hmm. That's the worst thing in the oh, world. I can't stand Is to, like, like, go that. to a bathroom in a public space and sit no, down. And no, unless it has a seat warmer function. No, none of them do. And none you of know them what do. I mean? None of them do. None of them do. So I if like you to sit think down, they do sometimes, but they don't. Well, I, I try to. If I sit down on one and it's warm, I just like I close my eyes. I'm just like, oh yeah, I'm 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 in a land of luxury right now. I'm sitting on a nice how often, preheated seat. How often do you use those toilet seat covers? Uh, you know those paper. Honestly, ones? never. Really? I just I just clean the toilet seat off. I'll get I'll get like three or four of them. I'll three or four. Start of them. putting them on top of each other. No, I never use them. I just go. To, I just get like a toilet, like a piece of uh, yeah. Napkin and wet the it thing and is, it's not like seat down. it's not like the seat has a whole heck of a lot on it, you know. It's yeah. it's what's in the toilet that it, it is worse. I would yeah, think. I would imagine. So we we uh, flash back to present day, and uh, Hank's like, uh, "You can count on me. I appreciate your confidence. I just want." And then <laughs> Buck, he's done. He's like, "Hank, yeah. uh, a little privacy, do you mind?" 
<laughs> so yeah, that meeting is over. Hank. <laughs> We're back at Hank's house, and uh, Bill is is uh, like a moth to a flame. He's out there touching the car, the big Cadillac with the uh, uh, steer horns on the front of it. But it's funny, the segue of dialogue from here, because he's like... Can I get a little privacy while he's taking a uh-huh. dump? And then the next, like the next lines are, like, look at this. It's long. <laughs> it's like, it's so, so big. Well, <laughs> well it's funny. Cause Bill is just out there talking to himself. He's like, look at this. It's long. It's like, it's so big. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like muttering under his voice. Yeah. It's just so weird. Uh, we go inside the Hank Hill house and, uh, Peggy is talking to him. She's looking at the, uh, the big Ben Franklin, uh, hundred dollar bill. And she says, he truly was, was the, the homely genius. genius. And uh, Hank proceeds to tell her that uh, she can take a good look at it because it's going back to Strickland on Monday. Uh, Peggy wants to know if he why he's not using this for his big client. He said, "I've never needed a three, three figure, figure entertainment, entertainment budget. budget yeah. Three figures, a hundred bucks. Yeah. <laughs> That's not how that works." <laughs> no. uh, he says, "I'm going to close this deal the same way I always do: a cup of coffee, a slice of pie, and a handshake. And if I hit a snag, pie a la mode." Which it sounds like you're trying to get a little kid excited yeah, yes. about something <laughs> yeah. you know it's not well, like a sales it's got to be really good pie i mean that's for, for that would pitch. be like the 50s or something right i mean that's the way you sell something to somebody then no, i thought they just like smoked a bunch of cigarettes and well but again you know you'd go to the diner with oh, the coffee yeah, 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 and the, the coffee. pie and all that stuff yeah it's uh like uh, twin peaks um damn fine pie oh yeah damn fine, <laughs> damn fine pie all right, so uh, he's going to do that, and uh, Hank goes outside, and now all the boys have gathered around this Cadillac car, and uh, he's telling them to stop messing with it uh, because Dale is over there pushing the uh, the horn, which is playing Yellow Rose of Texas. Oh, yeah, and then he says, that horn is for highway emergency <laughs> use only, and you two get off. I've got to return this pimp mobile in the same condition. Pimp mobile. I thought it was funny how he's always so... Uh, that horn is for highway emergency use only. That kind of crap. Like, it's so funny. So uh, Con <laughs> asks him why he has a silly cow car. Uh, and then the boys tend to uh, Oh, tell, Dale. Yeah, Hank's tells, entertaining a business prospect from the East, Mr. Yeah. Con. So Con's like, oh, <laughs> it's I It's weird how he says it. I like how he says it real slow and low. <laughs> from the East. From the East, <laughs> Mr. Con. He says, oh, I see. Hank suck up to make sale. And that, that does uh, rub Hank the wrong way. He's like, uh, Con, I've never had to suck up to make a sale, and I never will. And then uh, they question what the Holloways look like because, you know, those Boston The types, stereotype of a Boston, Bostonian <laughs> right here. Makes they're laugh. small, they're pale, small, pale, and wearing, wearing penny, penny loafers. loafers. We apologize right. to anybody from Boston. <laughs> <laughs> so we're at the airport, and uh, they meet the, uh, the Holloways. Uh, and Mr. Holloway already has uh, what looks like a 40-gallon hat on. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's got a uh, cowboy suit, and what I mean by that is that western cut. Uh, um, those are usually made out of polyester. Oh, you so know, with the those. leather cut that he's wearing or whatever? Yeah. 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 So uh, he's like, put her there, partner. And, of course, he's got the Boston accent, you know, but he wants to be a cowboy so bad. Uh, and Hank, uh, Hank questions whether this is Mr. him or not. Holloway is, and, is a prom just <laughs> tight after a six pack. Uh, which way to your Cadillac? Yeah, and, uh, Cadillac? so Hank assumes he's got this one in the bag. That's what he tells Peggy anyway. So they're back at the Hill house. And, uh, of course, Peggy comes out and says, would you like to freshen up with a nice hot towel? Here's one for you. And the thing that and, and I know that, that Holloway says something about it, but when they start unfolding those towels and they're actual, like, the size of bath towels. Oh, yeah, they're huge It's just towels, the funniest yeah. thing. Texas-sized <laughs> towels. <laughs> and so uh, uh, Hank tells them that uh, Peggy heated those towels on his propane-powered hot point range. Did a great job, I'll tell you what. And then Holloway really likes that, I tell you what. So he says he's going to say that while he's there. Uh, and Hank kind of launches into his first, uh, the first uh, bit of his sales, sales where he talks about hot yep. point, which hot point him having hot point is kind of funny. I know a little bit about hot point and, uh, it's a real, like, I mean, it was a, it's a Canadian company mm-hmm. uh, or not Canadian. Sorry. Uh, Ontario, Ontario, California. Sorry. Okay. I, I remember Ontario, but, uh, 
not Canada, it's in California. Yeah. And uh, it's like a real American company. It's been, it's been around since like well, 1903. You, when you say Hot Point, I think uh, Magic Chef, I think uh, Hot Point, Whirlpool, you know, those kind of those kind of uh, brands. Yeah, yeah. So Hot Point, they had they were actually like the first all white fully enameled like electric range oh, really? and yeah, first electric moistureless clothes dryers. Moistureless clothes dryers. Yeah. So they had uh, actually they were the first one moisture. to give you a 90-day replacement guarantee of satisfaction oh, okay. on your on your product. So right. but Hot Point's like Go a real Point. American company. So for Hank to sell, sell which a lot of people don't know it. I imagine a lot of older southern people would know it. Mm-hmm. Like like at that age, like probably the you know fifty year old, six year olds when this show came out, mm-hmm. probably knew what a hot point oh, was because yeah, 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 yeah. it was a big American appliance. And uh, I think it's, they used to sell hot point at Montgomery Wards, and so this is two episodes in a row that I have referenced Montgomery Wards. Yeah, yeah, because that I mean that's a that's <laughs> where you would have bought one at it was probably through Montgomery Ward or through a Sears catalog. So uh, uh, Hank launches into his first part of his sales. He said, "Well, I'd like to tell you Strickland can can uh, I like to tell you what Strickland can do to meet your energy needs." You see, at Strickland, the customer comes first. It's kind of interesting. The word customer begins with C-U. Well, we don't see you as just another sale, but as a member of our, our team. team. And that I goes do you like nowhere. I nowhere. mean, it goes nowhere. This guy doesn't care at all uh-uh. one bit. He's looking for a, uh, something like a Western movie. He's looking for some kind of John yeah. Wayne flick or something yeah. here. And so uh, Hank looks over at Peggy for some help, and she just mouths the word pie. So now it's time. It's time to unleash the uh, magic sales tool of pie or pie a la mode. Uh, they get to the diner, and uh, it's uh, Holloway, Bobby, and uh, Hank there, and he's asking him if he likes pie. And, of course, Bobby chimes up and says, yeah, I do. I <laughs> like, do. he doesn't know that Bobby likes pie. He said, uh, they got the best ty- pie in town here, Mr. Holloway, and his cook was Strickland propane, too. Uh, and Holloway is, is not interested at all. No, he's not interested um, not whatsoever. Mm-hmm. He, uh, he said, Hey, look, there's a real old Texas jukebox. Just like in the last picture show. If the last picture show is the only thing you know about Texas, then it is 1953. You don't know anything here. about Texas. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So the waitress comes over and says, what do you have? Hank, the salesman special. He said, yes, ma'am. Three slices of pecan pie and two cups of coffee. And then, of course, Bobby, three scoops of ice cream. Yeah, three <laughs> scoops of ice cream. cream. And so here's a teachable moment for Hank. He said, now, hold on, son. Let me tell you a little salesman trick. Don't start off with the ice cream right away, because if you run into a hitch, you got no place to go. No place to go. And then Holloway comes back, and he's pissed off because the Texas jukebox doesn't, doesn't even, have the theme from Doesn't have the Dallas. theme from Dallas on it. Like, what in the hell? I Okay, so <laughs> as a, a, a young man... Uh, I have been to a lot of Texas beer joints. Sure. And that is like at... You know, no, that's never on anything. From the age of six, to, yeah. uh, I decided that I don't like beer joints anymore. At, I, you know, in my thirties, so there as a guy no who was Dallas alive, team song as a guy who was alive when Dallas was years. on, I don't think that was even on the jukeboxes no. then. I don't know that that was playing anywhere. Maybe some Patsy Cline or something. Yeah, or, you know. yeah, not the theme from Dallas. Maybe even like if you're in a really middle of nowhere kind of place in the nineties, you would have got stuff like Tom T. Hall and Ernest sure, Tubbs and sure. stuff still on jukeboxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But not not a Gary Stewart, not you know. a uh, not anything from a uh, TV show, not a soundtrack from a TV show. No. <laughs> uh, so Hank Hank's is trying to get this back around to the sale, and he says, "Mr. Holloway, I won't be around the bush." There's 14 reasons to go with Strickland. Can you imagine sitting there reasons. and having Hank tell you the 14 reasons to go with Strickland propane? Yeah, I would have went with. They're MF very compelling Thatcher, reasons, yeah. by the way. I would have had to go with MF Dodge on that one. <laughs> and so uh, Holloway starts just singing, uh, JR, JR, he's a really bad guy who lives on a ranch with his mom. Say, I'm going to call you JR. Yeah. 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 Why is he singing? All right, and then we get uh, we get our introduction to uh, Thatherton as Thatherton Fuels. As not, Thatherton not, Fuels, yeah. Yeah, not uh, working for Strickland anymore. He said, "Well, howdy, Hank. Aren't you going to introduce me to your golden there, throated uh, friend?" Which there's a uh, a flub around here. I don't know if it's at this scene or not, but there was a uh, whatever scene it was where Hank uh, he sees the when he flashes back in time and uh-huh. he sees like a picture. Yeah, it's like the picture. It says Thatherton Fuels, but instead of it saying Thatherton Fuels, the store says uh, it was labeled Thatherton Propane. Oh, okay. Not Thatherton Fuels, right. like the company's actually. Yeah. Huh. I think that was uh, 
before the flashback, right before Hank did the flashback earlier be. on. Yeah. He says uh, he asked Hank if he's going to introduce him to his golden-throated friend because Mr. Holloway's singing, and he says, sure, I'll introduce him. Mr. Holloway, this is the only man ever censured by the Texas Propane Association for lewdness and conduct unbecoming a propane, a propane salesman. salesman. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know either. Uh, he says, MF Thatherton, Thatherton Fuels. I wonder now that that's the, I wonder if there's really is a Texas Propane Association, which I'm sure there is. Oh, I'm sure there is. But yeah. I wonder... I wonder if they're censuring people, though. <laughs> I wonder if that's that's really a thing. Like, oh well, uh, you were lewd and mis you know mis misconducting yourself. I doubt yourself. very seriously there <laughs> is a censure thing that's put in place for anybody who does uh, lewdness and conduct on becoming a propane salesman. I just don't think that's a thing. But if it is, I'm sure we'll hear about it. Uh, he introduces himself as M. F. Thatherton, Thatherton Fuels, and he's like, "Dang, glad to meet you, M. F." Uh, and of course, in his best Boston accent, and yeah, uh, the MF stands. Hank for Hank tries to get in front of it and says <laughs> yeah. the MF stands for. And then here comes Thatherton, my friend, because at Thatherton Fuels, we're everybody's friend. We want to be your friend too, Mister Holloway. Then he looks at Bobby and he says, "Who is this, Hank? Your district sales manager? I can't imagine yeah. it's been long enough for him not to know who Bobby who is. Who Bobby is? Yeah, yeah, he should know who Bobby is. I think that's just bullshit. Well." If you go back to that scene, and that scene was 15 years before, oh, yeah, so Bobby so. wouldn't yeah, have been born, I guess, so. I guess, at that point. But he's I imagine said, if he's been the competition for 15 years, I mean, yeah. I'm sure he would know his competition had a child. So Bobby pops up and says, I'm his son, Bobby, and I'm waiting for my pie. I'm waiting for my pie. <laughs> just, I can see you get your sense of humor from your daddy. Yeah. Bobby. Uh, he says uh, he gets his sense of humor from both his parents. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Which I don't know what that means either. Uh, but I don't okay. even know what that means. Yeah. Uh, and he, he I think says, that's his uh, fragile masculinity. I, I think so. I think so. He says, uh, pleasure meeting you, Holloway. I'll let Hank get on with his 14 reasons speech. And then uh, Holloway is really taken uh, by uh, Thatherton and says, Bobby, you can tell your Sunday school class that you met a real Texan today. M.F. Thatherton. Thatherton. And so uh, Hank, in a last ditch effort, says Joe Tiffany, which wonderful Texas name, Joe oh, Tiffany. Oh, Joe Tiffany. Yeah. <laughs> says, hey, Joe Tiffany. <laughs> you better make that by Alamo. All right. And that is a commercial break, and we're going to take one too. We will be right back. It is uh, summertime here in Central Texas, and I don't know about you, but I am already sweating. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've got swamp ass and ball sweat more than I know what to do with. And, you know, yeah. if uh, if it wasn't for Ballsy and their products, Ballsy. I'm sure right now I'd be able to smell my own balls. So I'm really, yeah. really Not you great. know, thankful for their products. Yeah. You know, your cleanliness uh, is a reflection of you, uh, especially below the belt. Uh, and, you know, I I... I think about cleanliness a lot because, like, I've, I've got a beard. I've had one for a long time. You've got one. Um, but I never really think about taking care of my down under as I do my face. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I don't think that a lot of people, you know, think about keeping their balls clean and fresh. No. I think that's a, a, a an endemic in uh, males is keeping our groin area clean. Yeah, because, I mean, it's no secret that balls are prone to odor, sweat, irritation. So, so you need something like Ballsy. Yeah, so guys, you need to upgrade your Balls game with Ballsy. Yep. Uh, they've got quality, long-lasting products formulated to keep you fresh, comfortable, and confident. And for me, yep. uh, I tried out the ballsy trimmer mm. uh, the beard the beard trimmer part of it i oh, shaved my okay. mustache with that's it. that's the cool thing it comes with both, both yeah heads. it comes with the, yeah, it comes with both heads so it's not like you have to use the same head on your face as you do your your intimate regions yeah your intimate regions yeah. so uh yeah they got your sack covered with a ball wash sack spray and more and i'll attest to the ball wash my balls have never smelled cleaner and felt fresher ever sure. in the entirety of my life so yeah i took uh, a i took a small uh sample of uh, friends and family and they said my balls smelled wonderful well that's good yeah, yeah. that's good my it, dog it told was me. uncomfortable after that yeah i'm still, sure it was, it was yeah. yeah so uh you know when you go to ballsy uh you can get uh different things like like you can take a quiz to see where to start uh they have a sack pack uh the sack pack has all of it uh, it's yes, the, ultimate, the trifecta. It is the ultimate trifecta of products specially formulated to take care of your most prized possessions, which should be your balls. And the uh, big thing is, is it is made right here in the U.S. of in A. In the U.S. of A. That's right. And and it always will be. Always will be. Or so tell the people at Ballsy. 
or so says Ballsy. So and says they Ballsy. have over 200,000 currently satisfied customers with a 30 day money back guarantee. So you've got to give it a try. Yeah. There's no risks involved. Yeah. And the only thing that could happen out of this is clean, fresh balls. That's what I'm saying, right? So what you need to do is go to ballwash.com, uh, put in promo code K O T H as in King of the Hill. So ballwash.com promo code K O T H and you'll receive 20% off your order of $50 or more. That's 20% off when you go to ballwash.com and put in promo code K O T H. So says ballsy balls balls. Hey, rusty. Hey, Mike. Your dog deserves tasty, healthy, real food, not kibble. Don't give him kibble. No, I, I like to give my dog food that's created by a vet that exceeds all industry standards. There you Fresh go. dog food, stable life. Uh, sorry, a, a stable shelf life and affordable. Uh, this this food here, Sundays for Dogs, Mike. It's 40, Sundays for Dogs. It's forty percent less expensive Holy than leading crud. fresh brands. Yeah, and uh, you know it, it's it like you say it's created by a vet. It's shelf stable, which uh, I I don't get those dog foods that are in the freezer and refrigerator and stuff. That just seems like a lot. Uh, I've got a friend of mine who makes his own cat food, which is weird. But uh, it, it's especially weird when you could get it from Sundays. For that's dogs. what I'm saying, right? You know, I mean, he's got cats, so he's weird anyway. But well, he could feed it Sundays for dogs. And feed his cats to Sundays for dogs. It's created by a vet. It's fresh <laughs> dog food. Uh, it's uh, customized for dog size, breed, and activity level. So all he has to do is take a quick quiz and see if it's right for his pup. Yeah, you just go to SundaysForDogs.com. You take the quiz. Uh, best part about all this, uh, well, let me tell you about some of the benefits first. Uh, you're going to get uh, increased excitement uh, from your dog about eating, uh, which my dogs uh, are, are not super excited about eating because I buy them junk, uh, but not anymore. Uh, you'll get better stool, which, you know, if your dogs stay outside all day, that's a big deal. Uh, and you'll get more energy out of their, out of your dogs, improve weight, softer coat, just a better life for your dogs. Yeah, if you feed them, this my stuff. dog loves it. Uh, yeah. it's real easy for her to eat. She's, she's an older dog, but it's really easy for her to eat. And she's uh, 104, she's 104. Yes. Right. And, uh, the fact not that in it's dog years, not in dog years, in human years. Yeah. She's yeah. extremely, extremely old. <laughs> and I think it's due to eating Sundays for dogs. Sure. Uh, which the quality ingredients are really good for her health. The, yeah. the crap they put in, you know, a lot of the store brand is stuff junk, is just yeah. junk for them. Yeah. And uh, a lot of filler and stuff like that. It's and like she's, feeding your kid Doritos all day. Yeah, that's what know? it is. It's uh, like a, a bag of Doritos. That kid's going to stop up at some point. And Sundays for Dogs <laughs> is like a, a bag of carrots with... It is. It's like carrots and real meat and things just like good that. good stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, if you go to sundaysfordogs.com and take that quiz and figure out the right plan for your pup, uh, the best part about that is you can get 35% off your first order if you use the code K-O-T-H, as in King of the Hill. K-O-T-H, and you'll get 35% off your order. Well, 35%, that's, that's a big good. deal. That you know, most play, deal. most of these things you hear is 10%. But uh, for this one, you go to sundaysfordogs.com, enter K-O-T-H as the code, and get 35% off. Yeah, that's great. Woof. Watch oh, us fight all through the night, deep in the heart of Texas. Okay, we're back, and uh, we see Hank with uh, Mr. Holloway. Uh, Mr. Holloway out in the middle of nowhere. Middle of nowhere. Uh-huh. Says, Which this is a really weird business tactic. It is a weird business tactic. Let me tactic. just take you to the middle of nowhere. He but said, I guess, you know, for the for the instance of what he did it for, so he goes and says, uh, it's the only place, or so he says, uh, under your very feet, Mr. Holloway, it's what's called the propane crossroads. It's the only place in the world you could straddle the east and west pipelines. And then he spread his legs and stood on either side. <laughs> and then he said, you want Texas, Mr. Holloway? This is Texas. So this guy right here being a, uh, a prick, for a lack of a better word, and uh, he, he goes... Where are the oil wells? Where are the rattlers, Jr.? <laughs> I want to buy a six shooter. So he he has this, like I say, he, he he's expecting the wild west coming to Texas. Oh yeah, which he is wants, a question. Uh, we we still get that though. I still get that. Well, that uh, we got that from uh, uh, in our other podcast that we do, mm-hmm. the David Letterman podcast, mm-hmm. when we oh interviewed yeah we interviewed Jay that Stern, guy yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah. Uh, he uh, yeah he he was like well how is Texas? He was asking yeah. us whether we ride horses and all that stuff. Yeah, other yeah. kind of wild it's stuff. Crazy. You have to go check that out. But, but uh, here's here's my question about this scene. If you were to find out where the east and west uh, pipelines straddle each other, is that where Arlen is? 
No, they probably drove out. You think they drove? I think they probably would have had to drive out. Okay. But how far is Arlen from Midland and Odessa? I, see, I mean, see. I wonder where the pipeline actually meets, which is probably. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or whether it actually probably gets you on a not. list. <laughs> it may not. Probably get you on a list <laughs> true. looking if it you up. Look at These the days with the way right. energy crisis is, that's right. that's you'd probably right. get put on a list looking up the location of a pipeline. So from this scene, we get uh, over to Hank's house again, and it's uh, Peggy and uh, Mrs. Holloway. And uh, <laughs> Peggy is serving her some free. Frito pie. But Frito she's, pie. She's letting her know it's spicy, spicy, spicy. <laughs> and so Mrs. Holloway tries it. And she says, oh, yeah, Which that's spicy yummy. though? How could how could anything that Peggy makes be spicy? I don't know. We've already been told that she are Frito spicy. Doesn't put anything in there. Yeah. <laughs> Is she trying to say Fritos are spicy? And she says, uh, "Yeah, that's yummy." And Peggy's like, "Yes, it's wonderful." <laughs> yeah. She says, "But Peggy, you shouldn't make such a fuss over me. I just want you to be yourself." And she goes, "That's the only well, the gal, gal I know, I know how, how to be. be." That is so Peggy right there. That is such a Peggy fantastic. thing because it's also yeah. like not what she does. No, she, she that's tries true to too. be sometimes she tries to be too much of she, everything but herself. She does try to be everything to everyone. Uh, we're back in the car, back in the Cadillac car with, the uh, Cadillac car. with, the, with the boys. And it says, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Holloway is, is he, he's just an ass. Number one, the guy's just a, a jerk wad. He's like, uh, I told you nicely to buy me a gun. Buy me a gun. That yeah, just, buy me a that's gun. That's a big deal that if is you buy a somebody deal. a gun. And well, so, not in Texas. Well, that's true. Hank's like, uh, well, I know it's always fun to take home a keepsake, but your time is so valuable. And that's what I mean by being Texas. Hank didn't even think of anything about no. actually buying the no, gun. He no, was just like, oh, he's just problem. trying to make a yeah. sale. He's still yeah, on the sale. He would have bought him the gun if it made the sale. <laughs> And so they're they're driving around, and uh, the only reason that I think that this is close to where those pipelines meet is because uh, they're driving around, and, and Holloway's like, there's nothing out here. What? And he asked him about the suicide rate, and Hank's like, do you mean right here? Because this is where Holloway Hollows is going up. So I'm assuming that Holloway Hollows is pretty close to Arlen, yeah, right? Yeah, it must be at this point, If they're going to yeah. service them. And uh, anyway, Holl- Holloway is like, there's something wrong, and... <laughs> Hanks. That's the darn <laughs> unions. Those darn unions. And he, he gets up out of the car and says, come on, boys, finish up them little Debbies and get back to work. Which uh, I don't understand why that Texas mentality is. I mean, you might be able to explain that to what me. Do you mean? Why, why do Texans hate the idea of a union, like unionizing at work? Uh, I don't think that Texans have always hated the idea of a union. I think uh, unions got um, vandal or not vandalized, got made into the big, big boogeyman. During uh, the Bush years, the Reagan years, Bush years, um, they were saying that unions cause job loss. Basically, all they're saying is if you guys group together, then these companies can't manhandle you anymore and can't tell you oh, what I got to do. You. So the beginning of Rush Limbaugh's career. Sure. Okay. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. That's about right. Yeah. Uh, you know, there are some there are some places where unions make total sense and there's some that aren't. But. To say I'm either pro union, anti union, that's just that's not the way the world is. You know, yeah. there are there are lots of shades of gray in this world, and everybody tries to reduce it down to black and white. Yeah, so. yeah it never is. Yeah, there's my soapbox. Uh, so he tells them to uh, stop eating them little debbies and get back to work. And Holloway says, No, 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 no. There's something wrong with you. Where's your cowboy boots? And Hank's, Hank launches into, I don't, into, have, cowboy I don't boots. have cowboy boots. It's Texas has changed, changed a lot, lot since the 1850s. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And and Holloway's just he's kind of he's very yeah. disappointed. He's almost like, pissed off the, more than disappointed. Geez, I just wanted to see some boots or spurs, anything. I come all the way from Boston to see Texas, and you don't have real boots, guns, or nothing. And that's when Hank sees the big Thatherton sign right there by Holloway Hollows that's going up. And he goes, you know, Mr. Holloway, I once had a pair of boots, and then one day my uncle Fess lost his in a tw- uncle Fess. Oh, you mean a Twista? <laughs> and so he says, "Yep, a big sign." And this is when Hank. Uh, really goes out of his comfort zone. He starts lying to him. Yeah, and you can tell he's lying. Yeah. A big Texas-sized twister. I tell you what, well, that dang twister sucked his boots plum off. Well, you can't bury a man in his stocking, stocking feet. feet. It's yeah, cowboy it's code. It's the cowboy code. So I gave so him, I my, gave boots. him my boots. Yeah. Got, well, you know, you got to have boots in the afterlife. And so uh, Holloway perks up a little bit. He likes that story a lot. But Bobby, it being in the back seat, he's like, I always thought you were afraid to wear boots because your toes are fat. <laughs> Yeah. Which is pretty fantastic. Uh, and then we go to uh, Peggy and Mrs. Holloway kind of just driving around on a leisurely leisurely drive, and they pull up in front of a house, 
And uh, Peggy lets her know that in the summer of 1953, something that she treasure happened right there in that pink house. She wants to know what, and she says the noted poet Ogden, Ogden Nash, Nash wrote his poem, The yes, Cow. I've never, I never heard of Ogden Nash before. I guess that's a great American poet I've never heard of. Well, he's known for his brevity and his uh, uh, shortness of poems. So um, that's his poem, uh-huh. The Cow is the Bovine Ilk, One in His Mood, The Other Milk. Yep, that, that's an actual poem. Oh, yeah, okay. That's his. Yep. Uh, I'm not sure how somebody like that gets famous, but all right. Uh, because he wrote a poem called The Cow. I mean, that, that, that was like, was that right was the 1953's the right yeah. equivalent of viral. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're about right. So with now we're, uh, Hank is kind of given in to this whole thing. They are at uh, the boot store, cowboy store, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and the, the poor guy is trying to put boots on Hank's feet. He says, sir, I don't recommend work. a cowboy boot for a chubby-toed customer like yourself. You might want to try a Birkenstock. Birkenstock is not what you want to say to Hank. No. Hank's just like, it's not what Hank would ever up. wear. Hank would probably walk around barefoot before wearing a pair of Birkenstocks. Not Birkenstocks, no. I don't think Hank wants to show anybody his toes, number one. That just doesn't seem like Hank. It seems like he would be in, in sock feet before he would show anybody his toes. Uh, but Mr. Holloway uh, has now picked out Hank some spurs. And of course, he's, he, he calls Hank Jr. every time he talks to him. Yeah. Bobby's very uh, uh, proud that he helped pick him out. Yeah, Bobby's super proud at this point. <laughs> Bobby, Bobby's just like a parrot at this point, you know, on Hank's, on Hank's shoulder. Uh, and Hank says, well, that sure would complete the outfit, but I don't want to scar the carpet. And this poor guy on the ground, he's trying to put these boots on Hank. He's like, who cares about the carpet? You hurt my feelings. Yeah. You know <laughs> what else he needs? A hat. He <laughs> tells him that he needs a hat just to get back at Hank. And, uh, of course, Mr. Holloway's like, yeah, big old cowboy hat. I want to see Texas with a guy in a big cowboy hat like mine because he's wearing that giant freaking cowboy hat. And Hank, this is the first snap from Hank. Hank's like, I'm not wearing a dumb hat. And then uh, Mr. Holloway yeah. comes back and says, I thought you were a real Texan like that Thatherton fellow. And then uh, Hank Salesman part kicks in again. He says, I'm not, I'm only not wearing a hat because of my solemn, solemn vow. vow. I made to president Lyndon Baines, Baines Johnson on the occasion of the birth of his daughter, Linda, Linda Bird. Bird. Was that really her name? Linda Bird? I think so. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, uh, Mr. Lyndon <laughs> Mr. Johnson <laughs> killed our Kennedy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like he killed our Kennedy. Oh my goodness. And so, um, uh, he, he also throws in a uh, uh, a uh, lasso. He wants uh, he wants this lasso from the boot store. Yeah, so they're riding back from the boot store, and he's and then, throwing it, it at him. Right, and then in comes uh, John Redcorn and Boomhauer. Boomhauer's like, hey, man, look at that rhinestone cowboy, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Hank's like, oh, not Lord, now. not now. And then he goes, look, JR, an engine and a hillbilly. How offensive, man, an uh, engine yeah. and a hillbilly. And well, s- but they don't even they don't flinch. They ne- well, well, they never say anything like that themselves. I don't think. Oh no, no, not they would that never offensive. Say anything like that. Yeah. They say whatever was appropriate for the era. But even I think at that, I think that was even offensive. Yes, in the nineties, that was pretty offensive. Yeah, he and says, he goes, uh, uh, "You might want to call Doctor Skulls, man. Nine one one. He's sitting there pointing at his boots. Y'all look like that dang old Hoss Cartwright with that old crap man, your toe cramp." <laughs> So uh, we're back at uh, Hank's house, and uh, he's getting those toe cramps, and Peggy's trying to pull the boots off of him. Uh, and she just wants to know what's going on with Hank. She goes, the way Bobby tells it, you brought, you bought my freedom from the Comanches with your rodeo winnings. And you were worth <laughs> every penny. Fantastic. I think it's funny that he says, and you were worth every penny. <laughs> yeah. He says, uh, you know, Peggy, being a salesman is just like being an actor. I'm just playing a role. You know, that fella, kind of like that fellow at the dinner theater you like so much. And she says, this is not Camelot, and you are not Jason it's Alexander. Alexander. <laughs> Uh, so he points at, uh, what Peggy is wearing and she is wearing a very stylish pantsuit. It's an all in one piece, uh, pantsuit. And he says, you're not wearing that to dinner, are you? She says, what? You don't like it? It's a special pantsuit for tonight. I got, and it came from Frumpies. 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 <laughs> what a great all place right. for yeah, a woman to a shop. Place. Frumpies. <laughs> He says, uh, yeah, um, don't you still have that bridesmaid outfit you wore to one of Lou Ann's mama's weddings? <laughs> one of her mama's weddings. Oh, here. And he pulls out what looks like a cheerleader costume for a cowgirl. 
right? It's, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. The, the, the hat that's just a little too small. It's got the thing that goes on. It's got the strap that goes under her chin. Yeah. It's got the red frilly shirt and then the, the, the skirt. It just, it looks like, uh, what a beauty queen would wear to show off her ability to lasso things, you know, yeah. during the talent portion. So, uh, being the ever great wife, she puts on the, uh, the, the funky little, I don't know why she has it. Number one, I don't know yeah, why sure she either. has that outfit, but okay. Not sure either. Uh, and so, uh, he, they're, they're about to go to dinner. Bobby's in there still trying to write his Sunday school report, which I don't understand, but, uh, I never, this, this Sunday school never made me write a report, but okay. Yeah. He said, Hey dad, I was going over the stuff you told Mr. Holloway. Uh, how could mom get pregnant with me? If you spent the eighties in a Mexican POW, uh, camp? Mexican, PO, Mexican POW, POW camp. camp. There are some big leaps taken in this a one. Huge I, and that's, that's one of my favorites is Mexican POW camp. That one's a good one. And he has to kind of uh, explain to Bobby that uh, some of the, sometimes some things you say like that, the details aren't yeah, necessarily important. The details important. aren't so important. And Bobby's, Bobby just snaps back at him. I got to like, get my facts straight, Dad. There's a Q&A after my speech tomorrow. And these Sunday school kids are tough. <laughs> these Sunday school kids are tough. Yeah, tough Hank's crowd. Like, Hank is like, I'll help you, son. I promise. When I get home tonight, we'll sit down. We'll go over anything you might have taken out of context. Um, and he's going to sit down and remove everything and he's got to rewrite his whole project. <laughs> That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. So now we're, uh, we're going out to eat with the Holloways and the Hills and we are at the Panhandler Steakhouse, which uh, I love their sign. It's just a big old, big old cow and says Panhandler Steakhouse in it. Yeah. And then, uh, so they, uh, go to eat or whatever and that's uh where they miss holloway didn't come because she was sick mm -hmm. because of the frito pot well you don't know that necessarily but peggy says uh oh i'm so sorry miss holloway didn't feel well enough to join us maybe what she ate on the plane didn't agree with her and we get that flashback to the hills house and bobby and luann are both there and they ask her if she wants some cold, cold frito cold pie. frito pie that oh, sounds yikes. terrible man yeah. uh and she just gives like that she's gonna throw up look uh, and we go back to uh, Panhandler Steakhouse, and uh, Holloway is like, "Oh, she'll be she'll be fine." Besides, every man needs to be cut from his ball and chain now again, ain't that right, Jr.? I, I just they have set this guy up to be the most hated guy. <laughs> he's just yeah, a he's jackass. terrible. Yeah, he is he really a jackass is. the whole episode. Yeah. So uh, uh, the uh, the lady at the um, the waitress stand or the uh, hostess stand or the host stand says, uh, Mr. Hill, your table's ready. And then she says to, to Peggy, the four top at 39 needs more iced tea, hun. 86, the jalapeno cornbread. And then you look around and every one of the waitresses there is dressed exactly like Peggy. Exactly like Peggy. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So they get seated at their table uh, with Peggy dressed like the rest of the waitresses and them coming up. And their waitress comes up and says, uh, Howdy, partners. Welcome to the Panhandler, home of the world's long longest salad bar and the second longest sneeze guard, which That's I think funny. is a great joke. Yeah, that is a good joke. Uh, would you cowboys care to take on our 72-ounce Lone Star steak? Finish it, and it's free. Which is refers to, uh, man, I can't remember the name of the company. I can't remember the name of the restaurant, but there's a restaurant in Amarillo. East Texas, yep. Mm -hmm. uh, out in Amarillo. It's called the Big Texan Steakhouse yep. uh, up in the Panhandle, Amarillo, Texas. I've been there. Yeah, yeah I've been there. And, uh, you know, if you go in there, uh, they have a chair and a table right in the middle of the place that's set up for anybody that wants to go through that 72-ounce uh, steak thing. So when they bring it out to you... You pay up front there, you, too. You're right. You pay when, up front, and they, they give you your money back if you finish it. When they bring it out to you, you are the show. Like... And you have to finish the fat. You have to fin the thing they don't tell you is you got to finish everything, including the salad, the sides, the rolls, everything. You got to finish everything to get it for free. It ain't just the meat. Oh, it ain't just the steak. Okay. Yeah. So that's she tells them, you. yeah, yeah, that's how they get you. It's not the 72 ounces of meat you got to put in. <laughs> she, you she, need a colonoscopy after eating that. Oh my God. Yeah. I can't even imagine. Um, and so Hank wants to know, of course, how much is it if, if you don't finish it? And I love the fact that she says, well, sir, like my daddy always said, if you have to ask, you can't, can't afford, afford it. it. <laughs> and of course, Holloway being the asshole here says, uh, that's what I'm having. Uh, and then we go over to the salad bar and, uh, Holloway is just shoving his mouth full of boiled eggs, which is the, uh, I, you ever pick anything up off the salad bar and just eat it right there? 
Never. That's super gross. It's pretty gross. Well, I mean, it's pretty gross as a human being to do that, but yeah. it's gross for anybody else that has to come behind yeah. you to grab something out of there because yeah. if you're not a clean eater and you're Well, he just also eating, sneezes. Well, he sneezes on the sneeze guard. Oh, gross. The second longest sneeze guard. Second longest. I, I don't know how much of it is uncovered, but if it's the world's I hope longest. it wasn't the area where he was And at, it's the yeah. second longest, yeah. So uh, Hank, of course, you know, uh, being the guy who uh, pinches his pennies, says, Lord, no, Mr. Holloway, you're going to fill up on free stuff. Then we get Dale and Nancy walking up, and Dale's like, hey, Roy Rogers, Halloween was last year. Uh, Hank has to once again introduce uh, Mr. Holloway to his friends and neighbors and says, Mr. Holloway, these are my neighbors, Dale and Nancy Gribble. Uh, Mr. Holloway came all the way from Boston. Now, here's where it it sets kind of a time for us, right? It it, it stamps itself with a year. Because he says, yeah, I know the place. That's Taxachusetts, ain't it? Say hello to Willie Horton for me when you get home. He's teaching at your kindergarten. Now, did you look up anything about Willie Horton, or do you know who Willie Horton is? No, I don't know. That's one I didn't, so, didn't look up. Okay. So during the 1988 uh, presidential campaign, um, uh, it was uh, George H. W. Bush running against uh, Dukakis, Michael Dukakis, the yeah, one yeah, yeah. put on the helmet inside the tank. Yeah. Uh, Willie Horton, uh, born in 1951, uh, this is from Wikipedia, uh, it says, is an American convicted felon who, while serving a life sentence for murder without the possibility of parole, was the beneficiary of a Massachusetts weekend furlough program, okay. which... Doesn't make a lot of sense. I don't yeah. know why you're giving a convicted killer who's given a life sentence a week in furlough. Uh, he did not return from his furlough and ultimately committed assault, armed robbery, and rape before being captured and sentenced in Maryland where he remains incarcerated. Oh, wow. So this guy was pulled out during the presidential campaign as a reason, because Dukakis was from Massachusetts, not to elect him because of his politics. Oh, okay. That's oh, exactly wow. what this was, yeah. Um, this was when, uh, George HW Bush was the, uh, vice president and the Republican nominee. And again, running against Michael Dukakis. Yeah. So, yeah. There you go. There's your history lesson for the day, kids. Uh, and so, uh, Hank, uh, spouts up real quick and says, I'm sorry, Mr. Gribble, but a cowboy doesn't talk about politics. It's a chow wagon. Happy trails. Just trying to get rid of it. Yeah. I haven't got my croutons yet. Well, the weird thing is Dale doesn't say croutons. He says croutons yeah, or cr- something like that. <laughs> croutons it's or something really like that. Yeah. weird, yeah. Uh, so we're back at the table. They bring Holloway his gigantic 72-ounce steak. He cuts into it, eats one bite. One bite. Pushes it away from him. Oh, and stick says, a fork in me. I'm done. Yeah. And Hank's like, oh, no, you're not. No, you're not. And he then, said, give me a quarter, J.R. It's really weird. He's like, give me a quarter, J.R. I'm going to go test my grip. Have you ever used one of those grip machines like yeah, that? Yeah, I've used it before. I don't. I never enjoyed that. I didn't know what it was. About. Like, I understand. The only, thing, the only allure that it had to me was I felt like I was in like some Guy Ritchie movie or something. Mm. And you're like on the... like beachfront yeah. in England because yeah. there's a place in England called Blackpool mm-hmm. and it's where all the gypsies would sell stolen stuff and oh, really? they'd have little booths and st- it's like a family place they would have like the carnival and they would have like the pier that had you so know all the fun touristy. stuff on it yeah it's a really big tourist trap thing and uh, they would have all these test my grip or test my strength or well, I understand the fortune test my teller thing, right? and, and yeah. I understand the fortune teller stuff even though really appropriate well it's a manly but... thing though grip if you I mean I'm yeah. sure if you look Oh, back man, at the whatever. test my grip machines it probably goes back to the oh you know, i'm sure it goes back early to the 1900s 20s, yeah. 1800s whatever yeah uh so uh, i just think of a big guy with like uh it reminds me of like the the white the old weightlifters with, yeah, the, with the big handlebar they mustaches had the big handlebar and mustaches with the barbells that were just like oh, metal sure. balls yeah yeah, yeah. uh ballsy so. <laughs> yeah metal ballsy <laughs> keep your metal balls clean yep uh, so this is really the first time that Peggy speaks up about what's going on. Yeah. She says, uh, oh, I thought so. You got something right there on your back, honey. And he says, what? And she goes, footprints. <laughs> and, and then she gets brought down a peg because the, uh, the, the head waitress comes over and says, break time's over, darling. The kitchen's backed up. Yeah. <laughs> Just wonderful. Um, Hank goes over to the grip machine where Thatherton is now standing with, uh, uh, Atherton is standing with Holloway over there testing his grip. Uh, Hank tells Peggy before he leaves that uh, he's making some progress. He can always tell when a customer's close. 
And then we hear the announcement overhead that says, Thatherton, your table's ready. Yep. And so he goes over to him and, uh, uh, Holloway tells Thatherton or Holloway tells, uh, Hank that his friend Thatherton's taking him to that club where all the waitresses are former, former Dallas Cowboy Cowboy cheerleaders. cheerleaders. Yeah. He says, well, it's too late, Thatherton. If anyone's taking Holloway to a gentleman's club, it's me, which is so anti-Hank. Yeah, really anti-Hank. I can't even imagine Hank going into a stripper bar, you know, but uh, it happens. A younger Hank, maybe, but, I but not guess, a married man, Hank. I don't even know about that because you remember when, when Cotton takes him to the hotel, even there. Oh, yeah, yeah, he, he was all wigged out. Thing. Yeah, you're probably yeah. right. You're probably right. So, uh, uh, Burt Reynolds slash Thatherton says, uh, well, then I'll see you over there then. And... And Holloway really likes him, says, I like that guy. Uh, Hank says, Holloway don't move a muscle because he's he's basically had all he can take. Yeah, he has. Uh, he goes into he's the bathroom. And then Holloway, just being a jackass, he's like, get me some protection too, which is just, again, it's gross, yeah, right? You're just like, go get me some condoms. I mean, for high school or you know, yeah, college maybe, kids or something. Maybe. Like, you could get away with that as a teenager, you know, in your early 20s. But sure. if you're like a 40, 50-year-old man talking to your buddy, like, yeah, grab me some protection, too, you're either single or just weird. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> and so the last shot we get before another commercial break is uh, Hank kind of staring at himself in the bathroom mirror and hearing Bobby's voice saying, the man I most admire is my dad, Hank Hill. Yep. Which that really cuts to the quick. Yeah, it does. So now we're at Jug Store Cowboys wonderful name uh and peggy is letting them out there uh letting out holloway and hank at the uh at the stripper bar which yep. is nuts uh she says okay have fun boys and then hank is kind of crawling out of the car he says uh he thought she was going to be mad because he was supposed to help bobby well that's what, that's what he says i thought she might be mad and then yeah. he looks over at her and she's got this she scowl on mad. her face yeah yes. she's pissed She's not going to let Holloway know, but she is pissed at Yeah, Hank. she's pretty pissed. He says, uh, you know, I was supposed to be helping Bobby, and instead we're going to the Jug Store Cowboys as, as, as part of my work-related sales excursion, which is, you can always tell when Hank's in trouble because he over-explains yeah. things. He says, uh, that, uh, as I said, keeps you in pretty dresses like that one, and she's just like, get out. And then he uh, has to ask her for 50 bucks. He asks and then after asking 50 for bucks. 50, he asks for some ones, <laughs> you know, for the G-strings. She just chunks some money at him and takes off. Yeah. Uh, now we are inside Jug Store Cowboys where uh, there's a lot of dancing going on. A lot of guys at those tables, those little tiny tables where two guys sit and watch women undress and dance around. It's just the weirdest. Strip joints to me have always been the weirdest thing in the world. I didn't mind them. I do. I not went a few times. Them. I went a few times, but for me, anywhere there's alcohol and people drinking alcohol, I try to avoid. So if there was sure. like a alcohol free strip club, I probably wouldn't mind going to one. But like, I just I don't really. Uh, I don't know. I think alcohol and women and it's just literally a room full of sweaty dudes is. I mean, it's just not really what the I'm. The thing I don't really understand like. about strip clubs is you go in there to get all riled up and then you leave. That just seems like a ticking time bomb. Yeah, you're paying me. for blue balls. Yeah, when you could get it for free from you know somebody so at a bar. Hank, <laughs> Hank is uh, <laughs> not worried about this at all. He's still in sales mode. You and know how so, to keep your blue balls clean, ballsy. <laughs> ballsy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hank goes into uh, telling him about how versatile propane is. It'll do everything a natural gas can do and more. And Hank gets interrupted by a dancer who is right next to the right table, next sticking to her Mike. butt in his face. Like her fa- her butt is on his face at one point. He's like he trying said, to look around it. He says, please, ma'am, I'm trying to carry on a conversation. Yeah, yeah, I see your rear. Very nice. Okay, there's some people over there that want to look at it, too. Yeah. <laughs> Which is wonderful. Uh, he says, now, how about it, Mr. Holloway? You say you less restricting, but this is his last ditch sales effort here, man. I mean, he yeah, is all in, and he, he is, is struggling, struggling so hard. And then, of course, Holloway is like, he's already drunk. And he says, buy me a mint julep. And he says, heck, that's not even a Texas drink. You can't even get your stereotypes types straight. And so he says, buy me a mint julep. Then I'll talk to you about propane. And so Hank's like, okay, finally. Thank God he's going to talk to me about propane. So he goes up to the bar 
and he orders a mint julep, and there is a waitress slash shot girl there. There's just like mint julep. The, the only reason I know she's a shot girl is because she's got on the what is it, what do you call that a bandolier? Yeah, yeah, when yeah. It's got all the shot the glasses, shot glasses in, it. in it. Yeah, yeah. Which is uh, th- th- this uh, the voice actor for this is also the same one who does uh, Nancy and yeah. Reverend Stroop. Her name is Ashley something. I can't remember her last That's name. A weird last name. Uh, so yeah. she says, uh, she questioned him about the mint julep. He says, yeah, it's not for me. It's for a Yankee client. I love the fact that he's got to say it's not for me. Well, I like <laughs> it's, it's for funny. the Yankee. Yeah. And then he goes, he make you wear that hat. You know, that's what's funny yeah. how she does that. Yeah. Like, I like, like that. Yep. Oh, honey, I know exactly how you feel. He says every night my boss makes me put on this humiliating outfit to seduce some drunk out of his money. We're and a lot alike. He says, she says, we're a lot alike. And What's I like it really when Hank has saying? these moments with just, you know, oh, different yeah. people yeah. because he doesn't think about, you know, he just was like, why do we do it, Chiffon? He looks at her name yeah. tag. He's like, why do we do it? And she said, Chiffon? we do it for the money. <laughs> yeah, we do it for the money, cowboy. I never made six figures a year at the Potato Hut. Potato Hut. And he's I like, six figures? <laughs> and she says, oh, yeah, soon I'll have enough to stay home with my granddaughter and her baby. <laughs> <laughs> He's, and this is this is kind of the final straw for Hank. He says, I should be home too, helping my boy with his Sunday school report. And, of course, she being nice says, hey, how about a lap dance? How old does she Which have to is, be to be at home with her granddaughter? And I don't know, though? but, What's like but the, the, I love the, the fact that the that. thing she has to offer him is a lap dance. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Hey, how about a lap dance? Uh, we go back to the Hill House, and uh, Peggy is questioning Bobby. She's like, what are you still doing up? He says, I don't get it. How could he have fought in the Spanish-American War the same year he invented the world's first pressure-cooking f- chicken fryer? <laughs> and she says, oh, Bobby, your father never fought in any war. He's like, oh, I know. I've given up on Dad. The most man, man I most admire is Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders, Sanders yeah. <laughs> it's just fantastic little aside there. We go back to uh, Jug Store Cowboys. So the first pressure cooking chicken fryer was invented by Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders. Yeah. As far as I know, I think it was. Yeah. I watch well, a lot of those stupid YouTube videos that are like 18 was it, minutes long. Was it somebody else's idea that came to him and he bought their idea? So I think it was already a thing and he bought the idea. He bought the idea and then yeah. mass produced it. And then mass produced it. Yeah. And you know that Colonel Sanders absolutely hated Kentucky Fried Chicken. Like in the later years, he would go to these restaurants and he would say that he absolutely hated this product because it wasn't what he originally made. Yeah. He said that the gravy tasted like glue and he, he just hated he hated the food. Do you remember and the he Kenny would go Rogers out and say that? Do you remember the Kenny Rogers, Kenny Rogers roasters? Chicken? You yeah. remember Kenny Rogers roasters? Mm-hmm. You know it still exists. Oh yeah, in yeah. Southeast Asia, we had uh, we had one on Valley Mills. Here. Yeah, it's uh-huh. uh, the only place that exists anymore is in Southeast Asia. Though really? I was watching a a weird food documentary. It was talking about all the food places that existed and are now dead. You know, some of them died out completely, and they only exist in stores with I whatever. Think you and I are they watching had. the same things. We on might YouTube. be. I yeah, we, we might are. be. <laughs> I watched one about Zima. The other night, oh uh, Zima! Did you think you know they brought it back for a little yes. while? Yeah, so I you bought some to exact, try it. See, yeah, I bought some the, to try it. Yeah. I think you watched the same one. It is still big in Japan. It never went away in Japan. I uh, never went away in Japan. So all that's right. what it is. There's a lot of American products that do that. They this has nothing to do with King of the Hill, but I'm going to give you a little Zima history lesson real quick, Let's just because I've watched this YouTube no, great. video. She, great content. They, when they brought out Zima, they tried to make it a man's drink, right? Because yeah. this was the time of wine coolers, and so they were like, "Let's cash in on this, but let's make it for men." They never could get men here in the U.S. to drink Zima. The only people I've ever seen drink Zima are my friends, moms, lesbian yes. friends. Yes. Well, there's a lot of yeah, a lot of uh, like a uh, women's cheerleaders drink. and stuff like that. It they all drink. drink. Yeah, it became, yeah. It became almost a uh, Smirnoff. It's like the little yeah. Smirnoffs yeah. or whatever. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy that now Marvel they could probably sell it. You know, they probably do good now. But yeah. back then, boy, they could not, and they tried so hard, and they never gave up on that whole "it's a manly drink" thing, and so that's what ended up killing it here. Now, in Japan, it is a manly drink. A lot of men drink it over there, but it comes in like 15 flavors or whatever. Well, that's the thing about the Japanese. If there's a flavor combination, mm-hmm. they're going to have a product with it. The Kit Kat oh, line sure. is insane. Oh, Kit Kats are nuts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't like Zima at all. I thought it tasted like medicine. It was pretty crappy. I was like 12 yeah. So whatever it tasted like, it tasted like. I mean, I we sipped it, but it, it was it, awful. It was man. that's it, it was is what it rough. was. It reminded me of like a sprite, alcoholic sprite is what yeah, we thought. But, but even worse, like like more of a syrup a medicine taste yeah. or whatever. 
Anyway, we are back at Jug Store Cowboys and uh, brings in the uh, mint. Brings in the uh, mint julep. The mint he, julep, which we later on finds out he really wanted he doesn't to even order. know what the hell he's talking he doesn't know about. What he's ordering. He gives him the mint julep and he goes, "Okay, now let's talk propane." And he goes, "You call this a mint julep? Where's the vodka? Where's the tomato juice? Maybe I ought to let Thatherton buy my drinks from now." On. That is not. He that's wanted a bloody, bloody mary. mary. Yeah, he <laughs> wanted a bloody mary, not a mint julep. julep. He didn't even know what he wants to drink. <laughs> And so this is the last straw for Hank. And he says, I tell you what, mister, I tell you what, I don't want your business. Not this way. You want to go with Thatherton? Go. But one of these days when your propane mixture is only 89% and you have a smelly condo development full of crying babies whose bottles haven't been properly heated, you give me a call. My name is Hank Hill and I sell propane and propane accessories with honor and dignity. And the only thing this dude has to say is those are them are fighting words, Jr. He gets up and he, well, he looks a lit fight. at this point, though. Oh, he's yeah, super he looks lit. three yeah. sheets to the wind. He doesn't like. He's not. You know, at the beginning of it, he wasn't drunk when he's. But slowly, as they're going through this, uh, you know, scene or whatever, you can tell that my favorite he's part so of this gone. is that he throws a bunch at Hank, and Hank just, just catches grabs it, it, which. Hank's a scrapper, though. He, well, you know, we've had Peggy say before, oh, no, he'd kill you, you know, or yeah, whatever. He's a like, scrapper. I think Hank could probably take somebody down pretty yeah, easily. I, I, yeah, well, it's it's that, it's it, it's like that with a lot of, because I was never athletic, but I, I have a lot of friends who were athletes, mm-hmm. and they still, even though they don't really work out or anything sure. more, yeah. they were going through puberty working out. Yeah. They worked out until they were at least in their early 20s yeah. and then stopped. So they built that core strength. Oh, yeah, sure. So, yeah, no, I wouldn't mess with Hank now. So and he's, uh, and he's lugging propane tanks. They're not. It can't be. Well, that's true. It can't too. be light. Yeah, you know, I guess you're that right all day long. That. Full propane tanks. He goes. Tanks. Uh, this isn't a John Wayne movie. Holloway. I'm not going to fight you. And then of course here comes Thatherton. I'll fight your pilgrim. <laughs> Yeehaw! And he just boom and chunks a punch him. at him. Yeah. <laughs> and just Hank takes off. And that that is really it. Which is what? funny though, because in this scene right here, you see them exchange a couple of punches. Yeah. And that dude from Boston just. Hits yeah. him with a haymaker for MF <laughs> Thatherton. Then you see the bottom of MF Thatherton's feet. <laughs> I, what amazes me is that Hank doesn't have to explain to Buck, you know, why he didn't get this guy's business. Nope. We doesn't never we never see any of it. So, well, there's a scene. Okay, so this yeah. is a bit of trivia that I was waiting until we got to. So uh, when the episode kind of ends on this peaceful scene, you got – uh, Holloway and all the fighting scene and everything. So we assume that Hank loses that. Right. Well, there's a scene cut from the TV airing of the episodes, which is, I imagine, what we watch oh, yeah. when we sure. watch Hulu, Hulu and stuff. Sure. It's all the TV cut. Well, the uh, scene that gets cut actually reveals that Mr. H- Mrs. Holloway is the one that actually owns the company. Oh. And it's actually in her name. So she's the one that actually had to be... That way, that makes way more sense in the fact that she liked what Peggy was doing and all that stuff, you know. Yeah, because and then honestly, she awards the account to Strickland. So yeah. the cut scene, so the deleted scene is actually on the DVDs. That's why I got to get, I got to get the DVDs. She honestly, is, if y'all want to buy the DVDs for us, just let me know and I'll set up a <laughs> PayPal or whatever so y'all can send it. She honestly is uh, a. a Totally secondary throwaway character in this thing, and that, yeah, that makes that makes so that's way scene, more sense. I feel yeah. like that's one, that's a scene that got cut. So that cut scene or whatever it kind of explains it a little bit more. But I guess uh, they probably just ran out of time, and that was just something yeah. that had to get cut. So we uh, we end this thing up. We're at church, and Bobby yep. is up presenting his Sunday school report. And it's hilarious. For some reason. It's great. I like it. I love and, that. this. Uh, I've been to a lot of Sunday school, and I know yeah. you have too. Oh yeah. Uh, I don't ever remember anything like this in Sunday school. I don't. I never had to make a presentation. Most of it was me trying to hide playing my Game Boy and then getting it taken away. Sure, sure. Literally every Sunday it was me like. Or like a group of you up there singing or whatever. And, you know, you just mouthing the words because you don't want to sing. Yeah. Uh, but we get Bobby standing at the pulpit and he is reading his, uh, his report and he's obviously summing it up. He says, uh, he doesn't have an oil well, he doesn't own a Cadillac and he doesn't wear cowboy boots because he's not a cowboy. And on account of the, on account of they squish his toes, but the man I most admire is a real Texan. He's my daddy, Hank Hill. And then Hank's like, "Woo, yeah, that's, that's my boy." My boy. <laughs> but at this point, Hank had to walk in to see this. He wasn't like at first when they pan yeah. through the room. There's no Hank, and then you then you eventually see him. So, uh, uh, but then Bobby adds a little bit at the end here. He says, "Thank you, thank you," and I want to thank my dad, especially, especially, not especially, but especially. I want to thank my dad, especially, for accepting me and raising me as his own, even though I was fathered by another man while Mr. Hank Hill was in a Mexican POW camp. Thank you. I got a funny, I got a real funny. <laughs> 
Well, months. not a funny story, but a family story to kind of wrap up the end of yeah. it. Talking about being fathered by another man. Well, one of my dad's <laughs> older cousins. Uh, when I say older cousins, my dad is now in his 60s, and his cousin, mm-hmm. if he were still alive, would be in his late 90s, okay. early, maybe even hundreds. Okay. But he fought in World War II. Well, he was a foot soldier, so he did this, the the whole storm, the storm in the beaches of Normandy and all that. Well, from the storm in the beaches of Normandy for four years, he didn't ever get back to the United States for four years. And he uh-huh. was always a frontline guy, so as the line moved, it sometimes it took longer and long as the line moved forward, it took longer and longer and longer for him to get mail and all right. kinds of stuff like this. Right. Well, there was one time frame of something like a year, a year and a half where there was no contact between him and his wife. Yeah. Well, he comes home and there's a little boy there. Oh no. He already had kids. <laughs> he, they had already had kids before he went to war. Oh yeah. Then okay. there was another one there, there when he got one. back. Well, Apparently, the reason why it's called the baby boomer generation is because that was happening as well as when all them guys got home, they started Mm. having more kids. So he accepted Mm. that kid, raised him. My dad said, yeah, I mean, he raised him his whole entire life. That was that was uh, that was his duty. He did it twice. <laughs> he okay. did his duty in the war, then came back and took care of some wow. the milkman's kid. The milkman's kid. Well, man, uh, there's really not much else to this. You you see the credits, and then uh, you just hear yeah, Holloway episode. laughing at the end with his big uh, cackle. Uh, but it's a great episode. It really is. Yeah, it, I really like this episode. It shows how far Hank's willing to go, but then uh, Hank's values always catch up with him. Always. So yep. he'll he'll go to the limits, and once that limit breaks... He gets he it builds up. I feel like Hank is uh, he's emotional and he gets mad, but he, if it's if it's something to do with work or something, he'll oh, yeah. grit his teeth and bear. Just like Buck, he grits oh, sure. his teeth and he's bared Buck. Tolerated his nonsense yeah. for fifteen years, and yeah. we'll see way more episodes later on where we see how much of a menace Buck actually is mm-hmm. for Hank and oh, the influence he has on his son, and all kinds of crazy situations. Like if a guy put my son in a situation like that, who's somebody I respected and you know as yeah. a friend or yeah. uh, even a, a you know a, a, a father figure type person, I would have whooped their ass. Yeah, you know, it was not, it was crazy some thing. of the stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but uh, oh, I can't wait, man! I can't wait to get there. I can't believe we're already on episode nine of season two. Well, we, yeah, then next week is ten. I mean, that's it's just crazy uh, how uh, how fast this thing goes. Yeah, um, you know, uh, even I wanted when to I, thank everybody though because I yeah. think we've hit over five thousand downloads total now. Wonderful. Uh, so you've guys got us to over five thousand downloads since we've been doing this podcast. And we're only on season two, guys. So yeah, yeah. Let's keep going. They, you know the the thing that the thing that we talked about this last week is unique listeners. We uh, are picking up unique listeners every day, and we really appreciate that. I'm I'm more excited about the unique listeners than I am the downloads. Yeah, I am too. Because that, that means, just means the, more and more of you are listening to us. And yeah, we, we appreciate we just can't it so thank much. Yeah, we really yeah. can't thank y'all. Thank yeah. y'all enough. So if they want to catch us on social media, where do they go? Uh, they can go to B-W-A-A-A-K-O-T-H, and that's pretty much just everywhere, Bois K-O-T-H. And then if you want to know more about us or if you want to catch some other shows, you can go to RogueMediaNetwork.com. And uh, Rusty, it's been fun. Yeah, it's been a good one. Uh-huh. Wimitanye. Wimitanye, indeed. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast. Frozen, Frozen, Heroes, gonna tell you about Frozen, Frozen, Heroes, gonna tell you about... Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Mike. And we have a fantastic new podcast to tell you about. Bros, Foes, and Heroes. It's the two of us looking into the world of comics, breaking down some characters that you may have never heard of, and some that are just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, so Zach comes up with a character each time, and uh, I go into it just completely blind. I don't know who this person is or what their abilities are or anything, and and basically I guess we kind of go over their origin story. And just some of the ridiculous stuff that maybe, especially Golden Age stuff. Oh, Golden yeah. Age stuff is always the best. And we will make sure to 
highlight all of the shenanigans and just absolute weirdness yeah. of everything. Yeah, that's right. So subscribe today and uh, follow us on Instagram at Bros Bows Heroes. And if you don't, I know where you live. Not really, but please subscribe. <laughs> bros and bros and heroes gonna tell you about bros and bros and heroes. Gonna tell you about. Welcome to One Star Rewind, a new podcast about those dreaded one-star reviews that every business owner hates to receive, but yet every customer loves to read. During this podcast, we will peel back that one-star review to better understand how it happened, when it happened, and what the business owner is doing after receiving that one-star review. This podcast will be about love, hate, and laughter. On One Star Rewind, we will meet with real business owners will tell their stories and how they do rely on reviews for their business. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or download us at roguemedianetwork.com. Please subscribe, but only rate and review for not a one-star review. Join us each time for a new review and a new story.